Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm pleased to have a special guest on our channel today. This is Reggie Green from uh, Fairway Mortgage. And I'm going to entitle this uh, video Lender Insights. Uh, Reggie's pretty big in the mortgage interest. So, Reggie, why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll sort of just get going and have a little chat. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. So uh, me and Jeff actually have the, the, the same last name. So I consider him my brother here. So uh, my name is Reggie Green. I've been in the mortgage business since 2004. I run a large lending team out of Scottsdale, Arizona called Team Green at Fairway Independent Mortgage. So uh, looking forward to speaking with Jeff and giving you guys all the latest insights on what's going on in the mortgage market, interest rates, all the stuff like that. So looking forward to uh, talking to you, Jeff. Good deal. So Reggie, just uh, quickly, we'll do it again when we get done here, but just give me your contact information so they can dial you direct if you want. Yeah, feel free to call me anytime, 480-206-5577. You can also text me at that number. Good deal. All right. So Reggie, so last week, or was it the week before? I, I, you know, the weeks sort of blur together here. We had that quote unquote shock of a uh, uh, inflation number, which, uh, which pushed interest rates back up from what I thought was a reasonable amount, you know, when I first bought my house, I think I paid seven or seven and a half percent, but people aren't used to that nowadays. So give us some insight. What do you think happened and uh, what do you think it might take place here? Yeah, so there's two, well, first thing, interest rates have went up right around 0.5 to 0.75% just over the past couple of weeks. So you've seen a pretty big change moving up. So there's two main events that caused this, okay? The first one was the jobs report. So every month, the, uh, the U.S., uh, I don't know the name of the, the, uh, the committee, but they basically do a jobs report about uh, unemployment rates, job creations, and things like that. And the job creation numbers came in way higher than expected. Now, when you actually look at the numbers, they were kind of done in a way that like maybe wasn't the best reflection of what's actually going on in the country. But that being said, the jobs report was a lot higher than expected. Okay, the other thing that happened was the inflation numbers. Inflation did go down, but we were expecting it to go down another 0 0.2, 0 0.1 to 0.2%. So both of these events had a negative impact on an interest rate. So you're seeing them move up a little bit higher over the past, you know, couple of weeks. Good. Yeah, it was uh, it was a big news event. I know that pulsed the stock market a little bit too. So correct, correct. So the other thing that's kind of coming up in March is you know, basically, if inflation's not going down as much as they wanted it to, and the job market's still strong, what that tells the Fed is, hey, maybe we can do even a larger increase to get the inflation number where we want it, okay, which is not really what we want. They've been kind of telegraphing a 0.25% hit in the federal funds rate that has nothing, doesn't have nothing to do with mortgage rates, but it's not the same thing. Uh, and now some Fed share people are saying we might do 0.5%. I still expect a 0.25% in March, but we are in a very volatile interest rate market right now. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, so everybody's nervous. You know, I talked to a lot of people, as you know, Reggie, and they say, you know, market's going to crash. I'm going to wait, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, but when I look at the numbers, I don't see a crash, uh, certainly not like 2008. You know, a lot of numbers point to us tracking like 2015, and the like. So what would you tell somebody who's sort of, you know, <laughs> waiting for that crash or waiting for interest rates? What, what would you tell them? So what a crash has to do with everybody likes to compare right now to 2007 through 2008. I actually was in that. I got in the mortgage business in 2004. So good timing. Yeah. Good timing. Yeah. But it was a great couple of years. I'll, I'll tell you that. But uh, um, everybody's comparing this like it's the same thing. And to be honest with you, it's not even close. OK. Uh, if you if you look at 2007 and 2008, we had a surplus of inventory. I don't know the exact numbers right off the top of my head, but you had tons of inventory and little demand. OK, so you have low demand and low inventory. OK, you're going to have prices drop a ton. OK, right now we have lower demand, but the inventory is super low. OK, and if you think about it, it's pretty easy to think about. OK, if you look at the construction numbers over the past 10 years, it's been substantially down based upon population growth. So we don't have enough houses in America. So we have an inventory shortage. The other thing that's happening is, think about if you are a homeowner and you have a 2% rate, like are you gonna sell that house? You're probably gonna put that as a rental if you possibly can, even if you wanna move. So the inventory being low, even though demand is on the lower side, is keeping houses stabilized and the price stabilization. And we can see that in all the reports on the Cromford report if you're looking at Maricopa County stats. 
Yeah. So I tell a lot of people, you know, you may not find the exact house you're looking for uh, because the inventory is so low. Uh, but nevertheless, not looking leads to never buying. And, you know, unfortunately, I run into a lot of older people that have rented their entire life and they have no equity at all. Yeah. No, I think, uh, you know, I'm pretty passionate about real estate building generational wealth. I think if you can buy, you want to buy, even if it's not the perfect house, you stay in it for some period of time, you do build uh, equity through paying down the loan, as well as appreciation over time. There's a lot of tax benefits to it. So I'm definitely a proponent of buying a house, even if it's not the perfect house for you forever house. Yeah. And also, Reggie, what I tell a lot of people is if I, if I had to buy my first house again, it would be a duplex. Because uh, you know, I live in one, I was living in an apartment at the time, I could easily have lived in a duplex and rented out the other half. Is that still a good strategy in today's market? I really like that. That's kind of called house, ha house hacking is what they call that. So basically yeah. what you're doing is you're buying a multifamily residence, typically two to four uh, units, and you are staying in one of the house that allows you to take it as a primary residence. You get better rates, lower down payments, stay there for a year, maybe rent out the unit that you were in and then go buy another one. So I'll give you an example. When my kids go to college, if they go to college, we'll see. I don't know if it's worth it anymore, but if they go to yeah. college or even if they don't, you know, when they turn 18 and they move out, you know, what I want to do is buy a house for them, put them on the deed with me and then rent out all the, the, uh, the rooms so they can basically start building their wealth. So we'll get a primary residence rate because they're going to be in the house and then stay in it for a year and then, you know, move on to the next one. So I'd like to buy four houses for my kids by the time they turn 22, 23. Yeah, that's an awesome strategy. I wish I'd done that, but I bought a house, uh, which worked out fine anyway. So, so good deal. So thanks for those comments, Reggie. Uh, so, so tell everybody again, can they call you direct? They call your office. What's the best way for them to get more information and get a loan going? Yeah, if they want to talk about what's going on with rates or just get a, you know, a free consultation on their specific situation, 480-206-5577, call or text is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, we try to be uh, available all the time, so we don't even have an office phone anymore. So you can reach me anytime, nights, weekends on that number, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can if I'm on the phone. Good deal. Good deal. All right. And you can always reach me at 602-790-2927. And I'm happy to talk to you about uh, whatever you want to talk about. Even uh, Reggie and I, one of these days, are going to get together and play guitar. So if you're a guitar player, give us a shout. Yeah, real quick before we end this, uh, we do see some positive signs likely coming for interest rates in March. We think the payroll jobs report is going to kind of reverse course. And then we, we think we're going to see some pretty good inflation drop in March. So I do think better times are ahead. You know, one of the things I've pre been predicting is interest rates are going to go down, but it's not just this linear process like this. It's kind of like this, you know, so uh, keep your head up. I do think there's going to be lower interest rates. One of the things we're doing a lot these days is temporary buy down. Uh, I just think it's a great product where you can get a one to two to 3% lower rate temporarily, and then you can refinance to a lower rate permanently once rates drop is what we hope. Good deal. Yeah, that's useful information. So, got any questions at all, call Reggie, call his team. He, he's always uh, a great guy to talk to about what might happen and how you can get into the house that you want. So good deal. I think that's a wrap. Reggie, thanks a lot. I'm going to just stop recording here.